Catherine. Um, we're happy you are here and um, we need a volunteer to do the minutes as we always ask. And remember the minutes have been, been amended. All you have to do is write down what the topics that were discussed, the resolution, yeah. the vote. Yeah, we're not doing word for word minutes anymore. We're not doing that anymore. So you can just copy the agenda, cut and paste it? Is that the... Um, and oh. you'd have to fill in that we discussed it and <laughs> any resolutions, but it's, it's, it's essentially that. It's, it's the decisions we've made to, to um, memorialize them. I did them last month. I think I did a little yes, bit more. Yes, you did. Maybe a little bit more than I needed to, but I, yeah, <clears throat> that's what I'm... Actually, I know it's not the time to discuss that, but if we're doing that, we should also copy in the transcript so that if people want uh, to see what was discussed, it's all there. It's my understanding. That's a good transcript. idea to make a, a, a reference to the um, video transcript specifically. Yeah, because my understanding is the transcript is a public document, but it has to be requested. And to the extent that we make the minutes public, we should have the transcript in with that. When you say transcript, do you mean the link to the YouTube video or do you mean literally the dialogue transcript? The dialogue transcript, which is what you get from YouTube. I mean, I guess people can get it by going to YouTube and just searching. Yeah, going to YouTube. It just available. Put in the link. Yeah, it's there. Um, I think William Ortiz was going to do the minutes, but I don't know that he's with us yet. I think um, I recall him I'll, saying I'll, I'll do, do them, but I I have to be out of here at eight o'clock tonight. So if you think we'll be ended by then. I don't think that, so I don't want to. Well, I don't know I about mean, that. I think, I think. I mean, we could be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we have a light agenda. I don't, I don't. I have seven. Otherwise I can finish items. them by getting the information from the YouTube. Uh, Barbara, them. thank you. You've set us a Thank you so much, tonight. Barbara. It's, it's to finish it in 90 minutes. So why don't we get yeah. started? That's Very great. Good. Andrew, do you want to introduce the first couple of things? Uh, let me get it in front of me, and I will do that. Uh, okay, so the first item is 72 West 109th Street. It's a renewal application for Special Radio Dispatch Corp. Do we have any representative from that company with us this evening? Oh my, um, Max, they were sent uh, a notice to appear, correct? Absolutely, that's correct. Um, yeah. And if not, we Maybe also- Maybe they're just uh, late. Yeah, we have a number of people in attendees. I wonder if anyone- We do. Uh, I, I know the second person, Eddie, is from Gail's office. Um, I'm not sure about the rest. So if anyone uh, here is for the first agenda item, just raise your hand. We can, we can move you so you can speak. I don't see any hands going up. So Andrew, why don't you give your report? And if the person for that matter comes up, raise your hand during Andrew's report. Oh, okay, we could do that. Um, so I wanted to bring everyone up to date on uh, what's happening at the MTA. There's a lot of good things happening and some not so good, but the good is, uh, is surpassing the not so good. And that's a great sign. Plus, as you may all have heard, uh, the president announced that um, we're also going to get another $775 million from COVID relief funds. And uh, we were facing uh, a fairly dire prediction for 2025, what's known as the out years, uh, without another source of, of revenue. And there are members of the state legislature and advocacy groups that are looking to change the formula of the gas tax and other things and get some new revenue sources so we don't lurch through crisis after crisis every few years. Um, but in the interim, uh, that's very good news, that additional money for COVID relief, uh, that's going to lots of transportation systems all over the country. Uh, meanwhile, as far as, as the safety issues are concerned, everybody, uh, I mean, I get the, the MTA press clips, but anyone that looks at a newspaper or, or a television uh, news show sees the, uh, the unfolding incidents. Um, fortunately, they're occurring a little less frequently, but that doesn't take away from how horrific every one of these attacks is. Um, there are efforts underway, um, which involve the governor and the mayor's subway safety plan, and the MTA is fully on board with it. It will bring together um, like 30 interagency collaborative teams from Department of Homeless Services, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, NYPD, and community-based providers. These will all go and talk to and 
try to get the homeless that are living in the system to food, shelter, and services. It is not healthy for anybody to live in the subway 24 seven. There's no bathrooms, there's no food, there's no vaccination. There's no mental health assistance. There's just a host of things I could go through. So we wanna get these unfortunate uh, New Yorkers the help that they need and deserve. And they, are, they have started last week. Um, they are ramping up this effort. They are, they are meeting people at the last station on lines and telling them that they cannot live on the trains and here's where you can go for help. Can we es escort you? And uh, we're asking all, they're asking all kinds of questions, this, these groups. Um, and hopefully this, this will have an effect. Um, I have ridden a lot lately and still see homeless individuals. Um, the police are also out in larger numbers than they were, and they are going to be enforcing the code of conduct, which means you can't smoke, you can't stretch across seats, you can't beat the fare. Um, there's a host of, uh, of the MTA code of conduct, and they're going to be announcing, they've already started, putting them on the electronic screens in stations so that everybody's familiar with the code of conduct. Um, you can't live in the system is obviously another one. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a host a host of things. Uh, you, can't, you can't be yelling and screaming. You can't blast music. Um, technically, you also should not be selling uh, various things on the platforms because that takes up room. Um, and I'm happy to say ridership is inching up. We hit 3.1 million uh, the other day, uh, which is just about as high as we've been uh, um, uh, post Omicron. Um, and um, Omicron took, took a lot of riders away and people are starting to come back, obviously with the mask uh, mandates being lifted for public places and restaurants, although it's still up to the individual restaurant, um, masking is still required on the subways and buses and commuter trains. And I'm guessing in the area of 92 to 93% are still masked up, but there are some people that just refuse to do it or they don't understand or, or what have you. Um, but in order to encourage people to come back, the MTA has instituted as of March 1st, some very interesting new innovative fare options. Peak fares on the commuter trains returned on March 1st, but uh, there are several new fare options. Obviously, you've all heard about fare capping using the Omni system. If you use the same uh, Omni card or device, your phone, what have you, um, and you have purchased 12 rides at 275, every ride until the next Sunday is free. That's what's fare capping. So you don't have to lay out the $33 for a weekly ticket, but you get the benefit of a weekly ticket if so. Uh, without laying out the money. So if you take 12 rides within starting on a Monday and going to the, the next Sunday, mm -hmm. um, you will get free fares after the 12th ride, which is great. Um, um, we're also um, expanding city ticket. Uh, it's not what I really wanted. I invented city ticket a long time ago and freedom ticket and Atlantic ticket, which we much prefer, but city ticket was only good on weekends and that allows you to ride Metro North or the Long Island Railroad uh, within the boroughs for a flat, flat $5 fee um, on a one-way fare. Um, obviously we prefer Atlantic ticket and freedom ticket, which we're pushing like mad because if you buy a weekly, which is $60, you get a free transfer to subways and buses. So all of your transportation needs are taken care of. There's hardly a reason to drive when commuter train, bus and subway are paid for. But the expansion of city ticket is, is a good thing. It's a step on the road to getting freedom ticket 24 seven on every line at every station within the boroughs. Um, also, um, there is now a 20 trip commuter train fare, which is similar to New Jersey Transit's flex pass, which means if you're going back to work, but you're not going every day, 20 trips, we're gonna save you a lot of, this 20 trip ticket will save you a lot of money over purchasing 20 individual trips. And if you're still, interested in a monthly, 10% 10, 10 is coming off the cost of a monthly. So these are a number of fares. They will be um, analyzed over four months. I suspect they will be with us longer than that. Um, we, we, are, we are beating or exceeding the McKinsey forecast for post COVID ridership. And we really all hope obviously that that continues. Um, but basically that's, um, that's the rundown of what's happening at MTA. There are a lot of good things. We are continuing to make stations accessible. The zoning for accessibility uh, law that the city council and the mayor uh, approved 
is is great if a station if if a building is asking for a zoning a bonus and it's within a certain distance of a subway station um interestingly one that's a fair distance but they're doing it anyway is at the fifth avenue and 53rd street station which is very deep it's got two levels um somebody at fifth avenue uh near 57th street uh is renovating and building a very tall building and they've agreed to make Fifth Avenue on the E and the M accessible. And that's deep. And it's going to actually be mid block between, uh, interestingly, between Fifth and Sixth Avenue. That's where their entrance is going to be. It's not going to be at either end of the station. It's going to be in the middle. So we look forward to this and, uh, and many, other, uh, many other stations made accessible thanks to uh, zoning for accessibility. And I'll take questions if there are any. Um, there's Jay and then Barbara and then Doug. Oh, sure. Now I see them. Uh, Jay, go ahead. Yeah, Andrew, um, just going back to what you said about the, um, how the situation with people living on the subway and on within the system, including sure. the platforms, everything. And we know that there's a longstanding problem with people that are simply will not avail themselves of the services being offered and uh, will refuse to go into a shelter. So what, what, uh, what is the policy uh, when those people are- uh, The policy approached? is if they won't, if they won't leave uh, with their escorts of these teams that I talked about earlier, then yeah. they will be taken out uh, and, uh, and put into, uh, into care. What if they refuse care? I mean, will they just be taken out and put on the street? Is what I guess. Um, I, I hope that will not be the case, um, but I will find out. Uh, the teams have sort of just started and we don't have that situation yet, but I'm sure it will arise, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, well, if, if there is some um, prescribed procedure, maybe you can find out, just let us know. I, I will absolutely find out. Um, I know that there's a Thanks. state law that says you can't, you know, put somebody in if they refuse. Um, I understand mm -hmm. there are, there's some state legislators that are looking to change that for their help, not for pe penalizing being homeless, but for getting them the help they must have. Right. Thanks. Sure, Barbara. Yeah, um, that was an amazing report, Andrew. You're such a wealth of information. Thank you so much. Well, it's true. Um, one. I love the system, as you know. <laughs> I do know. We're blessed uh, with this system. We got to take care I of it. I know, Andrew. Um, <laughs> a very fast question. Uh, is Omni coming uh, for use with the senior card? Absolutely. Uh, later this year, uh, all reduced fares will be available on Omni. Ironically, this kickoff of this fare cap is is happening now in early March and yet the machines the vending machines to sell the Omni cards within the system are not coming to stations until October so if you need a card you need to go to uh, one of the major drug chains have them and uh, and um, it, it's kind of hard some people have had a little trouble finding them you if you're using your phone your device as a way of using Omni that is available online you can you can download the Omni app you can get that now yeah, no. With, with, a, with a senior card? No, not not oh, senior well, that's rate what I'm yet. Talking about. Okay. Yeah, that's later this year. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Doug. Okay, here's my most serious question. Being that you are such an expert at trains, and I want to know if you played with toy trains when you were a kid. That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did for a period, although my toy trains were actually the subways. <laughs> I bet that and no, but in all seriousness, you are a wealth of information, and we're so lucky to have you in this Thank you so much. Um, The question I have for you is: I, I don't know if you mentioned I got distracted with the text uh, on those three screen doors, or they call them screen doors, the safety oh, the doors platform that door pilots <clears throat> that they're talking about. Yeah, the, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very encouraged that they're doing this, and I, 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 a, I wanted to know when they're going to actually be installed, and the other question is. I, I heard some report, and perhaps you even mentioned it, that there's such a small <clears throat> percentage of the stations that are even candidates for this. I find it hard to believe with engineering that there's no way around, you know, but can you just uh, speak to 
the number of sure. stations that are could you know sure. could, could be installed. Thanks. The pilot will take place at the Times Square platforms of the number seven train, the Third Avenue platforms of the L train, and the Suckfin Archer of of the E line out in Jamaica. Um, they will, uh, you know, it's going to take a while to, to get these things going. However, only it's estimated that only 40 out of 472 stations system wide can accommodate these doors. They are heavy, they require platform reconstruction. I don't believe they're the answer to all of our problems. I think the track intrusion software that the MTA is piloting, which will alert immediately if somebody's on the tracks, whether they dropped a phone and they're trying to retrieve it, somebody's living down there, somebody's going into the tunnels to do the system harm, or somebody has been pushed, whatever. Uh, they can differentiate between a person and a rat, and huh. and, and, and it's important. <laughs> we, we need to have yeah, this. Sometimes I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the elevated stations, these, these are extremely heavy, these platform doors, and most elevated platforms cannot accommodate them. And um, it's like $10 million a station to install these. Maybe we could get a break if we did a, a groups of stations, but... Um, I just don't know that this is the final answer. I think getting uh, mentally disturbed and emotionally disturbed people the help they need, uh, getting people to understand that they should not stand near the edge. They should, you know, there's so many apps and, and count time clocks. You don't have to peer down the tracks anymore to see if your train is coming. But um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that, that need to happen. I'm glad they're doing the pilot. Um, what I'm worried about is New Yorkers like to hold doors. We just hold doors for people and if somebody's running for the train and someone holds the door and it breaks does that mean that whole platform side is going to become incapacitated we need to find out a lot more about these platform doors and the pilot will allow us to do that my my only follow-up to that is i just uh, I, I find it hard to believe that with technology around the world that 90 percent of all of our stations are not a candidate for it someone's got to build a better mousetrap uh maybe you know, there's got to be some better way. I can't imagine that there's no way around it. Um, yeah, maybe there's a new, lighter version of these things too. Yeah. Maybe a company is willing to make them for us. However, Doug, one last thing. Um, unlike lots of other systems in the world, um, the reason these three test stations were chosen is because those lines have one car type running on them. But many of our lines have multiple car types running on them and the doors don't always open in the same place. So that would also make those stations, those lines, not candidates for the platform screen door test. Thank you very much. I, I sure. was in Bangkok and I saw them in Bangkok and they're amazing. But oh, I mean, you can see them on air train right at the JFK, Jamaica yeah. to JFK. <laughs> uh, um, Mark, I think we have- oh, sorry. Mark, uh, go ahead, Howard, yeah, are you thanks. gonna call? No, I was, just, I was just saying there are a bunch more questions, actually, you, you, you're raised a very interesting topic. Uh, Mark, Irena, and then Elizabeth. Sure. Thanks so much. Um, and uh, for, forgive me if I missed uh, this part of it, uh, of this great report. Um, a year ago, we were talking about the need for stimulus funds in order to keep the system afloat for some time. I, I was sort of wondering if I, uh, if I didn't miss it, whether um, that is still the case, um, how good are we? How long are we good for? Uh, should we be advocating for that again? Um, can you sort of address sure. where that is? Um, I started, Mark, by saying uh, there was some good news. Another 775 million of COVID relief funds has been allocated to the MTA. Um, we were approaching a, a deadline in 2025, whereby if if we didn't get more and more of our riders <laughs> back and and other extenuating circumstances like people getting back to work and everything and employers doing that again, uh, we would have some, some really difficult times in the so-called out years, which is beyond 2025. This will help with that. We did get um, you know, relief money earlier and we got COVID relief and we got some stimulus money and that is going to allow us to continue um, building phase two of the Second Avenue subway uh, for the three stations that will take it up into Harlem. So we, we are, we have received a good amount of, of federal money. It's, you can never say, don't advocate for more. We're looking to see if we can get some ongoing funding from the state and city, maybe a reallocation of how the gas tax funds are allocated or, or 
petroleum uh, business tax or whatever, but, or some brand new uh, fees, because the ca uh, congestion pricing will only be going to capital program, not to operating. Um, and we really hope that congestion pricing uh, comes on board sooner rather than later. It will make the entire system accessible. That's how much money it will allow us to bond and receive. So it will also change people's travel habits. Uh, if, if it costs you more to drive, chances are you'll look at the mass transit option, especially if we have some really ingenious fares, which I'm hoping we will, like Freedom Ticket. Um, I think Arena was on the list. Yeah, Arena is next. Hi, um, Andrew, what's the plan for the Metro card? When, when are they pl planning to phase it out entirely? It has been extended a little bit because Omni is a little bit delayed due to programming and other issues. So the Metro card will still be with us into 2024. It was to have been finished in 2023, but that's been extended a little. So um, with that in mind, what happens to students? Oh, all, all of the reduced kinds of fares are gonna be available on Omni later this year. Got it, okay. So if you don't- And have, Omni doesn't have to be replaced as often. It doesn't have that right. magnetic stripe that can get damaged and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually happen to be part of transit work through my company and um, they just automatically um, update the, I mean, I don't have to get a new card. I use the same card and it just sure. automatically updates. So I suppose all of that will transfer to- Absolutely. Omni. Um, what happens if you don't have a smartphone? You can use an Omni card, which Got is available it. at drugstores and starting in October will be in vending machines. They will remove some of the Metro card vending machines uh, to make room for the Omni machines. And they Got will it. like have more Omni than Metro card at that point. Thank you. You're so sure. smart. <laughs> Thanks. That's from hundreds of thousands of hours of meetings, Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Elizabeth, I think, was next. Yeah, I mean, I, I echo uh, Arena's comments, and I think uh, one of the things in my day job at the World Economic Forum we look at is um, the unbanked and the underserved, and looking at how people who do not have access to a credit card um, can tap into that. So I think you've answered largely answered my question. Um, the other thing, just about the subway doors was if anyone is interested in learning more about how cities around the world are handling that, it's a, it's a complicated question and it, it works better in other cities than I think potentially New York. Um, I'm glad that it's being piloted here and maybe it could be re replicated, but I'm happy to talk to anyone about what we're doing um, again in my day job about how we're looking at cities, especially in Asia. I know somebody mentioned Singapore uh, and, uh, Bangkok. Which is happy to happy to raise that and discuss it at any point in time. No, thank Thanks. you for that offer, Elizabeth. That's great. Uh, we have two more, Rich Robbins and then Ken Coughlin. Yeah, just real quick. I'm curious about data on Omni. What percent of users are using Omni versus MetroCard right now? And of the people using Omni, what percent are using devices versus Omni cards? I don't know the, le the answer to your last question, but um, more than 25% of riders are now using Omni and it's growing. Um, and That's obviously impressive. when the new fares become available to everybody, seniors, uh, students and, and disabled and everything, it will grow even more. And when the, when the cards are more easily available, it will grow even more. Um, I know it's Ken's turn, but I just wanna point out that there's a question in Q and A. Oh. Okay, we have, uh, Jay has raised his hand again. So why don't we try to wrap this up? Ken and then Jay. Okay, real quickly, Andrew, um, will Omni interface with the path train? Um, I believe it will in as much as Cubic is the maker of both our turnstiles and paths turnstiles. Um, I believe it will, and Omni will also be usable eventually on the commuter rails. Great, thanks. Sure. Jay? Yeah, I just want to respond to Doug's first question to Andrew. At the New York City store in the municipal building, there are model subway trains with tracks uh, available. And uh, 
I know because I bought them for my two youngest granddaughters. Oh, I think most most toy stores have trains. I've seen them all, all over the place. The subway? The subway? Uh, yeah, car? I saw them on a store recently. So, yeah. Oh, good. Let's get people interested early. That's great. Um, there is somebody uh, among the attendees who has a question, apparently. I think that's, um, that's about it. On, amongst the attendees. Um, yeah, raised hand, any attendees. Let me see if I can see that. Participants. Oh, attendees. Here we go. Uh, Susan Crawford. Do we have to promote her or, or is she available? You just make roll over it so that and you'll see that you can let her speak. Roll over the hand area. Allow to talk. There we go. Um, Susan, are you there? Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Great. Yep, we can. Go ahead, Susan. She's just she's muted again. Susan, this is Max. Uh, just try unmuting one more time. You'll want to look for the little red. Okay. Uh, there you go. Got it. Uh, we hear you now. Okay. Um, I'm Mr. Andrew Cuomo was uh, and it was going to be a game changer. Now he's gone, or he was gone by the end of the summer. And uh, Governor Hochul is calling the new tracks being rediscovered in Queens as a game changer. So I'm wondering if Andrew Cuomo's game changer will, is included in her, in her overall thing. It hasn't been mentioned in the press. So that's one question. And I'm the sorry. other is- Were you talking about the Interborough Express? Yes, the Interborough Express is in Queens and Brooklyn. Yes, and Brooklyn. Governor Hochul and is a big supporter of it. Right, but last summer, Andrew Cuomo was talking about reconnecting a, a, um, an Amtrak line in the Bronx from Co-op City sure. into the city. I can answer that. Uh, okay. So, and about a subsidiary question is, can either of those be uh, linked up to LaGuardia? Okay, so the reason why Interborough Express is not scheduled to go into the Bronx, but will go from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, along the route of the old New York Connecting Railroad up through through the middle of Brooklyn, over through the near the cemeteries, up through Glendale and Maspeth and into Jackson Heights and end there is because the track capacity on the Hellgate Bridge between Queens and the Bronx, between Amtrak and the new New Haven line trains that will be coming, there aren't enough tracks to have a, 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 a frequent mass transit type service over the bridge. That's not to say there couldn't be another track constructed, which would take time. Um, the, the Penn Access Plan of Metro North's New Haven line will connect Co-op City and Penn Station, and it will do it in 35 minutes compared to the hour and some odd that you'd now take for an express bus or, or a local bus to Pelham Bay Park to a subway. So um, it's gonna be a game changer. And I think a lot of people from, from Westchester might even, and some of the elected officials who represent Co-op City were a little, worried that people would drive from Westchester to the big parking lot of Co-op City and get on Penn Access there for such a quick ride to, to Manhattan. Um, so um, eventually it, it could, if, if we can get another track uh, constructed on the Hellgate Bridge into the Bronx, it could go into the Bronx, absolutely. But can either one connect to LaGuardia? Um, we are all transit advocates and, and others uh, are pushing for at the Jackson Heights end and to have a free shuttle bus uh, going to LaGuardia. It's a no brainer. Uh, it would mean such a fast trip from, from deep into Brooklyn to LaGuardia. It would be amazing. Um, so yes, we would love to see that. Uh, we would also like to see you know, an extension of the NW line to uh, LaGuardia or since Woodside is served by virtually every Long Island Railroad line, an air train from Woodside over the BQE like the JF FK air train is over the Van Wick expressway right into the airport. One of these two things, anything except the ridiculous uh, route from, uh, you know, Metz Willits Point to, uh, to LaGuardia that was planned before where you have to ride 19 out of 20 stops before getting to the train to the airport. That was ridiculous. But yes, LaGuardia is very much on everyone's radar. 
Great, thank you. It. Thank you, thank Susan. You. Uh, why don't we move on to our next agenda item, which is- Can um, I just suggest that you read the Q&A, just answer it? It's, there is a question in the Q&A. It's very simple. Uh, Andrew? Uh, will let's the easy see. Pay system will work? the easy pay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You should answer the uh, Q. Let's use the easy pay. Um, discount. Um, Omni will work with easy pay. Uh, Omni is going to take over everything, so you can be assured. Do Do we have to type that answer in, or no? You you, you can you can respond by saying I'm going to give it verbally. That's what I just did as you were speaking, and then okay. Now you can the Q &A. Okay. So. Um, that, that is going to happen later this year. Everything will be converted to Omni pretty much. They will not do away with MetroCard because uh, some things are still not going to be ready for, for all types of Omni use. And so they have extended the life of MetroCard until 2024, which means we're going to still have to pay people to clean the turnstile slots uh, and people will have to replace the. By the way, OmniCard lasts a good six years, so you won't have to replace them frequently. Okay. Well, thank uh, you so much, everybody. That was an interesting discussion. And thank you, Andrew. That was really helpful. Um, it was, sure. There's a lot going on, and, and you, you really keep us right, very well informed. Um, talking about things going on, there was an article in, in I think, yesterday's New York Times about um, reaching crosswalks, the, the white stripes in the crosswalks by four inches to, to uh, calm traffic. Uh, Rich Robbins sent this article around, and um, I was like the person who initiated the the issue to to speak about it. Rich, do you have some something you'd like to say about this? Yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but it's a good idea that uh, you know we know that most uh, collisions between vehicles and pedestrians happen in the crosswalks, and we know that failure to yield is a major issue, and by elevating the crosswalks. You know, for one, it forces the cars to slow down. And for two, it um, makes the pedestrians more visible. So just overall, it's a good idea. The article said that it's not possible in um, major intersections because um, we can't have raised crosswalks when there are buses. So for one, I think we should advocate for it uh, in our dangerous intersections that are not on bus routes. And number two, there are other possibilities uh, people might be familiar with cat eyes, which are the little plastic uh, reflectors that go in roads that both serve as um, bumps for people to roll over that slow you down a little bit. And they uh, notify drivers that you're driving through a, uh, a dangerous area. So uh, I think we should recommend to DOT, number one, that uh, to the extent that they're installing crosswalks in dangerous intersections around the city, that we want them on the Upper West Side in the intersections that we identify as dangerous. And number two, uh, where they are not possible, especially uh, the intersections that we know are really bad, but that have bus routes such as 96 and Broadway or the entire 96th Street corridor uh, and 86th Street and 79th Street and 72nd Street, uh, that on intersections we uh, DOT try out other solutions such as putting cat eyes uh, to protect the crosswalks. Okay, um, as you know, Rich, because this wasn't noticed to the general public, we cannot vote on such a thing, but we can certainly bring it up with Colleen when we talk to her later and ask questions, um, ask the questions you raised, in fact. Yeah, I just, I mean, that's disappointing because I, I had raised it a few weeks ago. Can I ask a point? Where does that rule come from that committees cannot vote on things that were not uh, noticed? I, I understand that you don't want the board uh, making a decision without having some having community input, but w where is that rule from that committees can't do it? Uh, I'll let the, Steve explain. The, it. the public has to be notified about. But where does that potential match? Resolutions. I understand. It, but where does that? What? Where does that rule come from? It comes from the open meeting law. It's right. in the open meeting law. Getting notice three days in advance to allow the public to come to give feedback on an issue. So it okay. is on the website right now. When was it posted? Not seven. That was two. just. Today, I think <laughs> we finally, um, I think we, Max and I were talking earlier. I think uh, when things settle down, uh, we may be able to uh, post our own online um, meeting notices again at some point and like John used to do, and that will be a, a great saver of time. We'll be able to get things up well in advance. 
if we're if we can't do things in our meetings, we only get 11 meetings a year and we're here to try to save lives. If we're stopped from doing things because actually posted on the website, a possible solution could be um, we get the committee's feeling about the proposal and then we schedule a meeting prior to the full board and vote on it then, which will have given the public enough advance notice. We've done that before in the past. We can do that with this and we can do that with Dan's White's motion too, which has not been noticed to the public. Uh, we should look into this. I looked at the open meeting law quickly, literally now just on the other screen. I, I, there's clearly a lot of uh, requirements regarding full notice of the meeting. Of the specific substantive items, I didn't see anything in there. So we, should, we, we shouldn't use the committee time, especially when we're trying to end by eight o'clock. Uh, to discuss this, but I didn't see it in there. So we'll talk about this offline. Great. Um, has, uh, has the representative from 72 West 10? Oh, I just, uh, I, I did, are we finished discussing this, uh, the raised intersections? Because um, just because the New York Times said you can't do it in certain intersections, the New York Times has made errors in the past. I, I have a pet peeve about this. Um, so and, I'm not and sure. The that's very the small raised area. I can't imagine that that would hurt a, a bus's massive wheels. Oh, I've got them for potholes much more than four inches. There's no doubt right. about that. So if we can have potholes that are over four inches, I don't see why we can't have safety measures that are four inches. Colleen, do you have any insight on, into that? You have to unmute yourself, Colin. I could maybe I can unmute you. You can unmute someone else. <laughs> Colleen, you're muted. Um, sorry, I don't have any insight on this that I can provide you with um, information because I have not, you know, had discussions about this in um, with Borough Commissioner Pinkar. Okay. Well, maybe by next uh, our next meeting, we'll have more information because this is uh, clearly a sense we shouldn't be voting on this at this meeting. So um, we'll learn more about it. Yes, let's move uh, along. We uh, 72 West 109. Stephen, you have your hand yet. up. Did you want, I'm sorry, Stephen, did you want to comment on that? I, I just wanted to comment as a, a, a non-voting member of your the committee as a process, I, I would feel much more, I mean, I would be interested in, in getting an expert to think. I mean, I would feel that a vote, whether at full board, simply on an article and our internal opinions, I would have a lot of questions. It seems like a great idea. I have no reasons not to, but I would think that the reason to have our committees is to get experts, to have information, to have a, a rezo that had more information than an article, like you said, the article sometimes can be wrong. So, well, that's that's what I meant when I said we need to learn more. Yeah, that's I, exactly I, what I meant. I, I, then what I should have said, I'm agreeing with Howard, but I'm just saying okay, I would good. be very interested in. Well, let's get a speaker know, for the next wrote meeting. An article, I don't know, or maybe the sources, but I think when we're going to make changes like that uh, in the street, and and obviously it seems for the positive that I would be very interested, and I think other board members when the reso comes out of it. Would love to hear about what other people say as well. And that yep. would be a request, again, simply as a non-board member uh, who votes, but I do vote at full board on these as well. Great. Um, we has, I see two hands up. I don't know if they're up intentionally on this matter. Ken and yes. Mark. Okay, Ken and then Mark. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine um, a better expert than the agency, the city agency that is, wants to do this. Um, uh, and so I would hope at our next meeting that Colleen would be up to speed on it and talk to Mr. Pinkar or Commissioner Pinkar, I should say. And, um, uh, and uh, um, you know, and then we could have a really informed discussion, but they're, they obviously think it's worth doing. And, uh, and I'm sure they have uh, data behind uh, to prove that uh, what they wanna do. I just wish it's right now only a hundred intersections a year 1700 intersections in the city. I don't think any of us are gonna be around when the job's done. Point well taken. Yeah. Yeah, if you did the math, they said there are uh, um, 
40,000 intersections and they're going to do 100 a year, which means it's going to take 400 years. Um, yeah. Mark. We'll all be, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> great. You know what they say about great minds or mediocre yeah. minds or whatever. If, I, I think if, if the community is, um, you know, really, uh, of course, the community is interested in this. I think what would be helpful. Um, with a takeaway is that maybe if you identify, you know, your top five, that would be really great, um, you know, in terms of looking to see whether it's feasible to do that at these locations. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. And we can check it with Bob Marley too. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> and, and just to give you a little bit more insight, I know Community Board 4 um, have been pushing for this for, you know, for the past few years. So maybe if you have a conversation with Christine Berthea, who's the co-chair, the transportation co-chair, you can get some insight on that as well. Because they were interested in piloting, um, I think a location in Times Square, but it was not feasible at the time. Okay, and the, and the technology that we're talking about using is the same as it was a few years ago? or it's, up, it's been updated? I think it might be updated, yeah. So but what I, may have been not feasible a few years ago could maybe now be feasible? Now be feasible, exactly, yeah. Great. Um, Susan Crawford and Rich have their hands up. Are you looking to speak on this matter? Yes. Great. Uh, Go ahead, Susan. Uh, am I, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, uh, just in a in addition to not being able to put raised sidewalks where buses go, they also cannot be where emergency vehicles go. It's on crosswalks, not sidewalks, just so you know. Uh, sorry, crosswalks, yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Rich? Yeah, just on that point, I think uh, if Colleen is able to find out more information about exactly what is possible and where, and also, Andrew, I don't know if you're able to talk to anyone uh, about the bus issue. I will, I'll talk to the head of buses. That'd be great. And then it sounds like from Colleen, a next step for the committee is to find um, the five intersections. It, it could make sense to do five intersections that um, could be an issue with buses if they're not possible to resolve and five that would be safe either way. Uh, and then the other question I think that's worth exploring is whether th they're officially called road studs or these cat eyes might be a possibility for intersections if there is an issue with buses and emergency vehicles. And Colleen, Colleen can you possibly well. send us the kind of technology that the size and the raised, how high it's raised, those kinds yeah. of things, so I can run this by the bus division? Definitely, I can get you all those details. I'll, I'll, yeah. Can you also look, see if road studs might be a possibility? Okay. Isn't it trucks as well as buses? Absolutely. Yeah. So. Doug, do you have your hand up on this matter? Yeah, uh, just real quickly, uh, it sounds like a great idea. Anything that can save lives, I'm all for. The question I have is in the past when we've asked for speed bumps and other things, one of the objections has been uh, for snow plows. And I wondered how this uh, would play into that. So, so with speed reducers, um, you know, in terms of evaluating the locations, we do not install speed reducers on bus routes um, and snow emergency routes and on wide streets. Those are the criteria, um, because um, and and because of, of the uh, the fact that you know with the traffic and you know the bus being um, you know a bus you know it just would just deteriorate the roadway more. What about the uh, signs that I've seen, Colleen, in places where like this road construction where it says raise plow? Couldn't we do that for, for these? Put a raise plow sign? I don't think that would be uh, a possibility. I don't think so. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Um, our next item is, uh, well, that, that really wraps up new business for tonight. The next item was sort of an um, old business. I, I sent a list. No, there's one other new business, oh. uh, Ken, uh, Howard. Uh, oh. It's, it's uh, Dan Zweig's, uh, um, he asked us to look at his resolution on restoring street cleaning um, to places that are not getting it on a weekly basis. And my block is certainly one of those. 
I can't tell you the last time when a plow went through here. That's one of the reasons it, it follows up on the uh, car towing and car removal uh, resolution that we did. Do you have it or do you need me to? Oh, I don't, I don't have it. I think um, Max has it, but. Uh, we, could, we could send it to the committee members and um, put it on our next uh, agenda. We could. Okay. I think it would be inefficient to send um, to send the whole resolution out now. Have everyone use time at this meeting to read it. Uh, we'll put it on our next agenda. People will read it in advance. And if we want to act on it, we could act on it at that time. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, time to so move we'll on. schedule that for next for the next meeting, right? Yes. Yes. And we'll okay. send out th that draft resolution. Um, Rich and Doug still have their hands up. Is that? You, you want to talk yet again on this? No, you, you just said that concludes new business, but I actually have a new business no, no, item. No, no, we no, haven't, we haven't even come to new business. Uh, okay, no, okay, good. I do have a do, new business item when it's time. Okay, we're going to do old business, then new business. How's that? And Elizabeth has something that's, that's new as well. Um, Rich, do you, your hand is up. I, yeah, I have a, a quick thing relevant to this, and then I have a new business thing for later, but... Uh, as far as Dan's point about uh, street cleaning, does that even need a resolution or can we just request that streets get cleaned? I, if, if I can say um, something on that, you would need a resolution because that would have to go to DOS and DOS would coordinate with DOT in terms of the signage and, 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 and as well as their schedules in the neighborhood. So I, it would definitely have, you would definitely need a resolution on that. Yeah, this is something I, I really think we should read what Dan has written because I think everyone on this call can on the Zoom on the Zoom can agree that we want our streets cleaner, but the devil's always in the details. So well, um, yeah, we 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 deserve an explanation from DOS as to why they're not doing this. Yes, is it you know is it is it crew shortage? Is it something else? Is it people not moving their car? Let's hear it from them. Yep. Yeah, it, talking about explanations, that brings us to our next. Um, item which is sort of old business and that is outstanding resolutions I, I sent around to the committee a list of resolutions it was not complete forgive me um, a couple of people on the committee pointed out a few resolutions I missed but these are resolutions that we labored over extensively and sent to the DOT um, Steve Brown was kind enough to point out there was one regarding uh, loading zones which uh, the DOT came back and said due to potential uh, due to losing parking spots, they're not going to consider um, the loading zone request uh, that we made at this point. I disagree with that. I think it's um, when it comes to parking versus potential life save, saving lives, you know, where I come out. Um, but I respect that they've decided not to offer that, uh, not to fulfill our request at this time. But again, there, there are all the other things on the list haven't, um, we haven't received a substantive response on um, again, Jay and um, Rich came up with a couple more that I left off. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Colleen, who I sent this list to last last month, and and ask if she has um, asked her to update on on the the the, uh, the items we did identify. Sure, and 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 going back on the Central Park request for loading zone, I just want to say it's not to say that we won't eventually look at this or do this. If I recall, I had sent you an email with a link and where you can identify a few locations and send that to us. And, you know, we can definitely look at that in the near future to see what we can do to accommodate, to create some of, you know, the loading zones. But again, it's not to say that we would not be up to surveying the area to see what can be done to create these spaces. I'll, I'll look for that email that I sent you with the link and um, take a look at it and see what you think. And, you know, if you can come up with a few locations. Okay, we, Colleen, we, when we adopted the resolution three and a half years ago, we sent you a list of very specific locations. We, we um, I think Mark Diller was involved in this survey. Mark, um, we, we went out and, and identified specific locations. Um, I sent it to you again, I guess it was I, about a year ago. I do, I do recall the list. Yeah. The list was very- but I'll send it to you again, uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Um, in, it, in any event, the, you know, the thought on our part was, this is not something that 
requires a massive budget or we just we just were at pretty much a loss to understand why this is um, an impossibility um, having even a couple of these. Um, so and, and, and again, I, I do recall the list, but it's not to say that um, we we can do all of it because that's that's not the case. I don't expect all um, of it. Exactly. OK, great. I will I will. Um, um, I will pull the list back again and see what we can Great. do. And if you need it, I can I can find it and forward it to you. I think I have it. Um, okay. The other um, resolution that you have on the um, list is to daylight certain intersections. So we do have a response. It's being finalized um, for this particular resolution. And um, I will send you and the board a copy of the response early next week. Uh, my colleagues um, are working on it. And um, they mentioned to me that they're finalizing the letter and we should have something by next week that I can share with the community. Um, in terms of reconfiguring West 22nd Street, this is the one for the river to river bike lane. So our bike division, um, they have collected counts um, from river to river and um, they have taken preliminary um, observations. And it looks like, you know, from the west side that this is something that, you know, that can be achieved and feasible, but however, it might be challenging, challenging on and, and the east side. And we were hoping that, you know, we would get some of, um, you know, we would get elected supports on that as well. So this is something that the community board can help us with and, and be involved in helping us to get, you know, the support from elected officials for this. And, um, we, we are having internal meetings to discuss next steps with this. And when we are hoping we will come to the community board to give a presentation. But as you know, prior to coming to the community board to give a presentation, we always like to have a pre-meeting with the community board and the elected officials to get feedback on that. Um, but you know, reassuring you that our bike division is working on um, a proposal for this, that we will come to the community board and we'll share it with with you. In terms of timeline, I will keep you posted on the timeline. Once we have our internal meeting, I'll let you know what the next steps would be. So does this depend, Colleen, on getting East 72nd Street involved in this? Central Park to the to Riverside um, Drive we is not would, possible? We, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't know if it's possible or not, but we would have to connect with all of the stakeholders along the corridor. And, and share you know, the proposal, whatever that proposal might be with them to get their input. But yeah. you know, that would be ideal to have river to river, but mm -hmm. having the access to come down the Hudson River bikeway, the most used bikeway in the nation and have access to uh, Central Park and, and um, therefore Midtown Manhattan where a lot of people work, that, that, that would be a significant improvement. Yeah, that and a lot be, of the east side has I, access I, I say, to the I say this at once at every meeting. The perfect should not be the enemy of the good. Um, we have a few hands up. Roberta, then Irena, and then Ken, and then Jay. Roberta? Hi, thank you. Um, I, I, I've been having trouble with my computer, so that's why my video is off. Um, I, I think we need to reach out to the electeds. We have new electeds now. Uh, and, and also we need to reach out to board aid because I think board aid has not wanted to have the, the cross bike lane. Um, and, and I know that um, Landmark West does a lot of work with all the um, buildings and stores on, on 72nd Street. So I think they could be very helpful with us to reach out to um, some of the stakeholders on 72nd Street. Thank you. Um, Irena? Irena is absolutely correct. Um, Roberta, Roberta just actually expressed my concern. I remember, Howard, when you raised this at a committee meeting and, you, and I asked you about community outreach, particularly the business community um, between West End and um, Central Park. And you said that that would happen after DOT did an evaluation. So I just hope that we do our due diligence and we reach out to property owners and businesses um, and all the key stakeholders across 72nd Street and make sure that they are aware that we're having these conversations and that they're engaged. 
Thank you. Uh, I, I, I completely agree. Again, this, this is the result of a resolution that's already passed the board and, and the whole goal is to improve it. Um, that's, that's the whole point. So. But not, to what, this point, I'm not questioning, I'm, I'm, Roberta, I'm, I'm not questioning the merit of the proposal. I'm questioning the process to exactly. introduce bike lanes on both sides of 72nd without the benefit of public input is really not in our best interest. And we should always figure out a way, pandemic or not, to contact people who are gonna be directly impacted by changes that we're proposing. That's all I'm saying. I'm not speaking about the merit of the proposal. I'm just, in, I'm really, and I think Roberta, his recommendation to reach out to Landmark West and other Black associations. The, many, of, many of you are have relationships with business owners across 72nd Street. Let's just make sure they know what's going to happen before it happens. You know, people get deliveries. It's just a lot going on in 72nd. And I'm just asking that we do our due diligence. You still have, you still have, um, uh, uh, sidewalk, restaurant sheds across 72nd, you have buses. It's just a lot going on. And I just think it's important that we let our neighbors know what, what, what plans we have. I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not going to make an opinion on whether on the merits of the proposal, I just want to make sure we do appropriate outreach. I agree and, and 100%. And, and you're right, Arena. I mean, there are new electeds on board. It would be great to get letters of support from them um, about this. And again, reaching out to businesses and um, you know other stakeholders, property management, letting them know, hey, this is something that you know has the community board has passed a resolution on. They're working with a DOT on it because this would help us um, and in, in with the engagement process. Um, Ken and then Jay and then Rich. Um, yeah, well, first of all, I, I, I have a couple of questions for Colleen, but um, when we approved this as a board, um, uh, there was outreach to businesses. Um, advocates uh, went door to door and talked to businesses, and that was part of our deliberations um, and was a factor in our approving it. Um, when uh, the next stage is we have been waiting, I don't know what, two, three years for DOT to uh, uh, come to us with a plan. Um, and that's all we asked for was a, a, a proposal. And when they do that, um, then there's going to be lots of time uh, for the public uh, to be noticed and to hear about the plan and to weigh in. And um, that's, that's the way it works. Um, and uh, so, um, uh, but I, I have um, just had a couple of questions about for Colleen, our, our um, are you basically saying that you wouldn't consider building just the Western segment without uh, the East sides uh, getting on board with this? I'm, I'm not saying that. Um, what I'm saying is that we've started the preliminary studies on this, looking at this, and it, the, we, with the West side seems more feasible. The East side is going to be challenging, but I'm not saying that we would not do that. Um, and first of all, Ken, the resolution is from 2020. It hasn't been several years. And yes, there was outreach that was done by, um, you know, and I, I, I do recall outreach was done, but again, that was a few years ago. And I think we need to revisit, you know, and engage others um, of, you know, getting support for this. Well, but I, I don't think we need to revote this resolution. This, I, I don't this think you a, should. I don't, I a, don't think you should. This is the, you know, basically the spirit of our community is that we want this. Um, I mean, and yeah. I mean, keep in mind Central Park took a few years to get done as well. So yeah, it didn't happen a, overnight. Just a few, tell me yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, uh, am I, but, well, I, I, but I, can I just interject? That's, there's no justification to unnecessarily delay it because we've been dilatory in the past. You know, the goal is to be as, as efficient as possible. Yes. Right. And I don't ex I don't expect and I don't want the community board to delay this by all means. And and just on the east side, is it uh, just for my information, is it that it's the community board uh, is the main stumbling block or is it the electeds or is it both? 
I don't want to say anyone is a stumbling block. I just, I, I just mentioned that, you know, there should be more engagement involved in getting them on board. Has DOT tried engagement? Um, we are working on that. Yes. Yeah, we are. But it would be good from the, your, from your community board as well to do that. You mean to, to reach out to our friends on the east side? Yeah, that would be helpful. Both electeds and committee boards. That's what I suggested a few minutes ago. Yeah. Is that it, Ken? Is that it, Ken? Yes, that's it. Okay, Jay and then Rich, and then maybe a few others. Um, going back, Howard, to, uh, to the discussion on loading zones. Uh, another issue which has gotten obviously stale uh, because of the amount of time that's gone by. And I know I wasn't on the committee when that original uh, resolution and list was devised. And since that time, uh, there have been many, many changes including um, uh, bike lanes, restaurants in the street, uh, the vacancy rate of stores, et cetera. So I think the environment has changed a lot. And before um, we resubmit a list of locations and ask DOT to come back, uh, as Colleen said, that since they are may still be in fact open to possibly doing uh, some number, even if it's a few within the district. I think we need to bring it back to committee uh, to look at the list and look at that issue in light of uh, what's happened. Uh, and obviously parking uh, is an issue when you do loading zones and commercial traffic and so forth. So I think it's much too stale to just go back, use the same old list uh, and ask DOT to come back with uh, something. We've also, we, we, for example, we have a, what I think has been described as a pilot program along West End Avenue uh, where uh, loading zones have been established uh, just to give an example. And I, I, I I don't think we uh, should be considering this uh, in light of the situation that existed three or four years ago. So I would ask that first you circulate uh, whatever resolution was passed, circulate the list and put it back on the agenda uh, for an updated discussion. Okay, thank or you for your thoughts. Look, uh, an updated Rich, look at the locations. Rich. Uh, there, the, all the locations are in Central Park West. Rich? Yes, yeah, so we, I'm not a lawyer and I don't speak Latin, but the concept of stare decisis, and I probably pronounced it wrong, of sticking by precedent. I mean, I'm finding this really troubling that we've got years of work of passing resolutions. The agenda item here is just to find out the status of the resolutions, and we're re debating a lot of items that we've already passed. And these are past resolutions. These are not proposals. These are resolutions that the board has already passed that we just want to find out the status. I'm also finding it really troubling that DOT is saying, you know what, you passed that a long time ago. We haven't done anything for a few years. It's stale now, so it's no longer valid. Because that basically means that you know, everything we've done is for naught because DOT didn't act on it quickly enough. And I understand that some things have changed with COVID, but most of these, you know, the fundamentals are still there. We know that our streets are jam packed with double parked trucks because um, you know, people are getting more and more shipments and you know, they create a danger. We've heard the police talk about how double parked trucks are a major danger causing crashes, yet you know, that's still happening and we need a solution. And again, we're here trying to save lives. And if we know something's a danger, something has to happen. And the fact that we passed a resolution a few years ago and DOT hasn't acted on it until now, doesn't mean that it's still not as much of an issue. 
And it's you know, in many cases more of an issue and we hope that things move forward, not that we have to re-deliberate everything because um, nothing happened uh, based on our first resolution. Um, the rich pretty much summed up something that I was thinking, what motivated me to put this list together was not whether I was for or against the resolutions. We're all, I, I said it in the email, we're all volunteers and there's nothing more demoralizing to a volunteer than to do a lot of hard work and have it not recognized by the agency that's supposed to react to it. Whether I agree with it or not, I just want a, re just want a reaction. I think that's, that's what um, Colleen should be taking away from this that you could simply tell us it's too expensive or it doesn't make sense or loading zones no longer make sense because we have restaurants in the street or whatever. All we're looking for is response. And I think, and I really want to, to uh, cut, keep this conversation limited. Again, we have our eight o'clock uh, deadline, which we're not gonna make. I don't want to talk about the, the individual items on the list. I want to talk about how the DOT responds to them. But we can, we can discuss the items at some other point. All I'm saying, all I had in mind when I put this on the agenda was to make sure the DOT gave a substantive response to everything we do, whether we agree with it or not. Um, you wanted so a status update, basically. Yeah, that's all. A substantive status update. That's all. Um, and I, if, if, if the comments are going to debating things we did two years ago or three years ago, I, I respectfully ask that we save that for a different time or a different forum. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I told, I understand where you're coming from, Howard, but um, I think it needs to be recognized that, you know, we had a pandemic and we're still trying to get over a pandemic for the past two years. So a lot of our projects were held back because of this. We, we couldn't do the work that you know, necessarily would entail coming to the community board now or even next last year to give, you know, a more detailed proposal of, of a lot of, you know, what's in these resolutions here um, because of that. And the fact that not every resolution that the community board passes, um, DOT, DOT is gonna be, you know, um, you know ready or gung-ho to, to approve it. I mean, a lot of thought um, has to go into the work that we do as well. And I, I really do appreciate the community board's patience um, with, the, with our agency in getting a lot of these, um, you know, work done based on the resolutions that the board has been sending us. But, you know, a lot of analysis goes into what we do too. So, you know, we just can't take for granted that what the community is telling us, we would like you to, hey, DOT, we would like you to do this and do this right away. It, it doesn't work like that. And, and, I, and again, I do appreciate the hard work and effort that the committee is putting in with delivering these um, resolutions, but a lot of thought and a lot of analysis do have to you know, be done before we even commit to projects like these. I, I totally understand that. I we think understand. it would be helpful for the community board mm -hmm. if we had a sense, a minute or two of what that work and analysis is so we don't feel um, yeah. So we're not misled into feeling it's being ignored. If we knew that work and analysis was going on, I think that would completely yeah. solve the problem from my perspective. Yeah, and when we get requests for bike lanes, um, we do a lot of outreach. I mean, in terms of flyering door to door for the community board meetings, um, when it's gonna be implemented. So we do do a lot of outreach and then we have to have free meetings and then you know, with the electors and the, and the community board and then come back to the board and give a presentation. So a lot of meetings and with stakeholders is involved mm -hmm. um, with, with, with this. And, and, and again, you know, it's, it's been two years. That's why I recommend um, that we have the conversation with the new electeds and with, you know, CB8 um, and, and garner the support so we can say, hey, community board seven issued this resolution in 2020. Um, DOT is looking at it, they've started their analysis. We would love to have, you know, these supports on record to say that, you know, everyone is on the same table. And, and it's not to say that we're not going to do this, you know, it's, it's always good to have the, the support on hand. Great. Um, uh, Howard, actually it's Max. I just want to let you know there are a few, um, actually there's one uh, comment in the chat you might want to address either now or Okay, point. why don't we have Rich, Susan, Ken, and then Stephen speak. I'm just calling them in the order uh, I see them, and then uh, we'll do okay. the chat. Sounds I good. spoke already. Okay, that's great. Uh, Ken, keep it moving. Oh, Susan, sorry. Okay, 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Let me just preface my, my query. It's a query slash suggestion by saying here on 110th street between Broadway and Amsterdam, uh, between Broadway and Riverside, uh, Amsterdam and Riverside, several years ago, bike lanes were painted in. And as a result, the double parking trucks are not in the bike lanes anymore, they are in the driving lanes. Why? As the driver explained to me, he said, well, if we get a ticket from the city, it's a fixed amount. If we're in a bike lane, the driver is responsible for a much higher ticket. So they're in the street, they're literally in the street. So 110th Street is now this zigzag of traffic, sometimes with EMS going over into the oncoming lane because of all the double parking. So here's my question slash query. And please, you're all sitting down. I can't help but wonder if the, the spots where the fire hydrants are could not be used for unloading trucks in 20 minute increments with a countdown clock in the window. Oh, I'm not done. And two drivers at all times so that somebody, if it had to be pulled away, is there to pull it away. I think that's a, a definitely that something we should discuss at our next committee meeting. All we're discussing is the DOT's response to, to these resolutions. The substantive, that's a very great, I actually think it's something that we should consider, but again, th that's really not on the agenda for tonight. I, maybe I'm not being- And many of the trucks won't actually fit in the fire zones. They're that big, but whatever, we should discuss it. Yes, there's a I, long- I'm just putting it there out there. I, I was here for Dan Zweig's sense. thing, so I'm still here. So I'm okay. putting it out there. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, and Thank there you. has to be a reason why that's such a sacred space in literally every city I've ever been to. But again, we, we can definitely discuss that at our next meeting. Ken and then Stephen. Yeah, um, first of all, just uh, Susan, I, you know, you make a distinction between the street and the bike lane. Bike lane is part of the street. Um, so. No, I understand. I'm just saying that there's no double parking in the bike lane, not, you know, not out of the driver reverence for it, but because they'll have a much higher ticket and they personally will have to pay for it. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> I guess that's their decision. I'm glad they're not parking in the bike lane personally, because it's- But they're more, in the uh, driver lane. Okay. There's, there's too uh, much double parking, no matter that's where. That's right. We need more loading zones everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just uh, offered a solution. Okay. Um, I, I just, could I ask Colleen about another specific ask? Sure. Oh, sure. If it, if that's what this agenda item is for. Okay. Um, the cross park, safe cross park routes for cyclists. Uh, um, last we heard there was going to be a, um, this was, I think, January, February before the pandemic, there was going to be a task force. Uh, among the various agencies, um, so. I was, was just, just gonna get to that one. That, okay. That's the resolution that the board sent to us as well. So we, we are not going to put together a task force. We have been meeting with parks and with the conservancy on this. And the last that I've heard is that we're following up with the conservancy, with Central Park Conservancy on their capital plan to see what the next steps will be. Um, and, um, you know, again, as, as soon as I have more information, um, I'll share that with the community board. But a lot of coordination has to go with parks and with the conservancy as well with this particular project. Do you know when their capital plan is gonna be formalized? We, uh, we have a call with, um, with, the confer the, with the conservancy. So I'll find out and I'll, I'll email the, the board. I'll email um, Howard and-, and um, Andrew. Andrew on this, and they can share it with you. I think I do have your email as well, Ken. I and with Steve Brown as well, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steven, then Ann, and then Jay. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I got a comment and uh, maybe a request. The, the comment is if, if we're here to talk about um, the process, which I think we've talked about for about three seconds uh, in the total of this conversation. Um, first off, I just want to, uh, acknowledge Colleen. I think Colleen is one of our best reps. 
And, and I think we have to put this in relative controlling expectations. She comes every single month to come here. So I think Colleen, by just showing up, does a lot. And, and I would also say that, you know, I just want to support her as well. I've heard her paraphrased or misquoted, I think, a little bit. I don't agree with sort of the way they're saying, well, when I hear this, when I hear this, because I'm not hearing the same thing. So I'm just going on record to support Colleen. I thank her for showing up. I can see she took her time. She's got notes in front of her. And anybody who's from other chairs, I can tell you that in education, I don't think I ever got a single comment ever from one of my resolutions over two years. So I think we also have to control our expectations. We're an, and I'm the chair, but we're an advisory and we're giving it to them. And I think we have to be, what our accountability is, we deserve feedback on all. And sometimes they may say, this is not the time or this is not. Let's hope that they're doing half or more. But I think there's a feeling like we spoke, listen to us. That's what I hear a little bit. And I think we have to temper a little bit of our expectations that you know we don't snap our fingers and they do their things. That's my thoughts based on sitting in other committees. But again, I want to acknowledge Colleen, who I think takes her job very serious. And if we could get someone from DHS to show up at a single meeting, I would jump up whether she spoke or not. So she's literally giving us feedback every time this, that, and I'm supporting her 100%. And I think we, this is the best representation of any, uh, uh, of any department that shows up. So I, I think you, we just have to acknowledge that and, and appreciate that and, and take a notice. The second, Bravo. I, I Bravo. Comment. I, it, she, she looks like she has a ready to go through all the reports. I, I would be interested in seeing why don't we let Colleen speak and then comment? Because every time an issue comes up, there seems to be eight hands. And most of those hands, Howard, I know you're doing your best, but then we're relitigating them. We're talking about bike lanes right. and this, that. And I, I, I don't know other than it's that. unproductive. Exactly, you know, it's unpro I'm agree. supporting you, Howard, by saying, yes. You know, we're not here to relitigate things. We did this. We're here to get updates from Colleen. So That's exactly super, the point. I showed up today to get the updates from Colleen. And my strong request is to let her speak, let her go through her updates. And then if we have questions on the updates, not the merits of the proposal, not to this, then let's do it. I think that would be productive. But I'm super interested in the updates. I hope that I hope you have great feedback on all of us. And I would highly recommend that we just let her the space to do that. She looked like she prepared and let her give her update, then open it back up to questions and we could do so and try and empower it. If someone asks a question that's not about process or this, say, sorry, we're going to wait for that. I mean, that's your job as a chair with Andrew. So I, I would applaud a heavy handed approach to, towards doing that. I, I think, think Colleen be... knows we really appreciate her being at these meetings. Um, I'm glad you repeated it, but it goes without saying that we really appreciate her presence at these meetings. Absolutely. And the point is the fact that we're raising these issues show how much we value your input and how much we expect from you, which is a double-edged sword. But I just... And you, know, you, you may remember, Colleen, after the meeting that you, uh, Ed Pinkar, Howard, I, and, and Steve had, um, we're actually asking you your opinion on various matters before bringing it to a resolution. So that's how much we value you. Yep. So um, you. I appreciate you that. comments, um, but why don't you just finish what's on your list? And then if we have anything regarding the process, we'll discuss it. Otherwise we'll move on to the next item. Great. So the, um, the resolution on the curbside usage, as you know, congestion pricing, we're still waiting to see what the outcome is gonna be with that, um, this has been assigned to our parking division. So parking is evaluating this and um, they have assured me that we will get, or the board will get a response by next week. Um, so that again, you'll get a response by next week for that one. The other thing is um, address, the feasibility, address the feasibility of a westbound cyclist route on West 100th Street. So we sent a letter to the community board on March 7th. I don't know if the community board received it, um, I think I also copied uh, yourself, Howard, and Andrew, and Stephen on this. Yes. Okay, on March great. 7th, that was yesterday, huh? No, 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 I'm sorry. Um, that was sent out on um, February 22nd. It's dated oh. February 22nd, but I had resent it on March 7th as well. 
Um, the other thing is that the reconfiguration of left turn by vehicles at certain intersections. So this was a resolution that was issued in um, 2021. And I had sent um, an email to the community board on October 7, 20, uh, 2021, asking for specific locations. And the reason why I asked for specific locations is because your resolution is very broad. We'd like to narrow it down. And it's not to say that our signals division um, will not, or it's not to say that they're not going to look at the locations that you sent us, but it would be great if you could identify um, maybe 10 locations that you would like us to look at and our signals division will go out there and survey the sites to determine whether they're feasible or not. Great. Okay. And I think you had some additional resolutions that you wanted responses for, so I can follow up with you on that as well. Yeah, Howard has mentioned the intersection of 65 and Central Park West and doing something for pedestrians uh, because uh, they're in danger from two different turning vehicles, uh, two different directions. So we were asking for a pedestrian phase there. Okay. Okay, um, what comments on the process? Again, not the substance of any of these past adopted, fully adopted by the board resolutions. Anne has her hand up and Jay has his hand up. Anne? Okay, uh, Jay, why don't you go? Yeah, I, I had sent you a note uh, Howard, to add to the list uh, what we had asked DOT to look at, we passed a resolution in September specifically asking DOT for evaluation and suggestions or proposals on safety issues concerning the uh, proliferation of the use of e-bikes. And we gave them a couple of, you know, including but not limited to things like helmets, identification, registration, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, in line of what you and Stephen have said, I, we're looking for an update to see if since September DOT uh, has done anything, uh, has anything concrete to report or what, if, if anything is in, uh, is in progress at this point. Okay. Um, um, by the way, my list was far, was probably not comprehensive, as as Rich and Jane pointed out. So, people know of any other resolutions that are outstanding that haven't been responded to, just email right. them to me. Right. Um, yeah, and, anyone and, else? Yeah. And Jay, I'll, I'm going to pull your resolution and I'll see the, check the status on that one. But it seems what you're asking for might involve you know your local assembly members as well. It does. Yeah. It okay. does, Colleen. My my. Uh, you're absolutely right, um, and it was a broad selection of state, local, uh, agency uh, people who received the resolution. But my my point is to that in evaluating possible uh, solutions to the safety issues, that part of that would obviously involve configuration and. Uh, signals and so forth. And uh, I, I suspect DOT would be, would play a significant role in that overall discussion with other relevant agencies, with electeds, et cetera. That's, uh, that's one reason why we requested DOT to do it. We also asked in that and a subsequent resolution uh, about looking into registration and insurance and helmet requirements among yeah, but that's, others. That's not the DOT. That wouldn't be us. Definitely not that. I, under, I understand that, but DOT um, would play a role in that. And yes, our resolution would. in September specifically asked DOT for any recommendations that they would have regarding safety issues. Yes. It's in the resolution. Now. Yes, that's right. DOT. We will add that to the list, Jay. Um, we have Carl. So, can I get a response? Jay, I, I've um, added it to the list and I'll get back to the committee on okay. it. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank Carl you. Carl Mah Mahaney. Yeah, hey, Howard, thank you so much. Um, and Colleen, thanks so much for being a recurring feature at these, at these meetings. Um, I'm, I'm the director of Streetopia Upper West Side. We're an advocacy organization uh, working for livable streets um, in, in our neighborhood. 
And um, I, I just like to reiterate the premise of this meeting or something that Howard said, which is that it can be extremely demoralizing as a volunteer or a paid advocate to um, feel like your work is not being acknowledged, especially when the work um, relates to matters of life and death. And DOT has a huge responsibility um, in our city. And a lot of the decisions that are made um, at the level of, of the Department of Transportation do affect people's, people's lives um, and safety. Um, so I just like to just reiterate the, 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 some of the frustrations in not being kept in the loop um, and to acknowledge, Colleen, that your job is not an easy one, um, both in representing the department here and um, in uh, you know, sort of managing um, the messaging for the, such a sprawling agency. But thanks for showing up. And, um, and I think anything that you can do to keep advocates in the loop, keep committee members in the loop, let the community feel like they can get a little bit of a window into the process would go a long way in, um, in keeping people satisfied and feeling like they're valued. That's it, thanks so much. Well, well, what was your organization? Streetopia. Hi, Jay. Street, Street, Streetopia, Upper West Side. Colleen, are you done with, with your report yet or will you have more yeah, to tell I us? Yeah, I am. And, and just to add to that, we have a really, DOT has a really great relationship with all of the community boards. And we work very diligently to keep them up, updated with all of the projects that we do. Um, so I, I know it's, it's not an easy task, but we try our best. And we appreciate your efforts. We just want more. We just want more. Yeah. And now, let, me just, let me just ask um, if if seventy if a representative from seventy two West one hundred ninth Street um, car up. service has has shown up yet? No. Um, we have one more hand up. Oh, oh we have two hands up. Roberta Howard. Let me ju Howard. Just let me ask you. How do you want to handle that? You want to just not not do a resolution. Oh. No, if they don't show up, we don't get a resolution. It's okay. okay. I think that's um, that's what we normally do. Yes. Yes. Roberta, then Rich, then Elizabeth. Um, first of all, I want to compliment Colleen. I worked with her for many years, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, when I ask you if you have a resolution, you know you find it for me, and and I also want to mention a couple of things that. Max and I are working on trying to create a, a database that will have all of this information in it. So, you know, when we, we look at what re resolutions were made in 2020, 2018, 2022, we'll, we'll have them, we can reference them, we can look at them. Right now, it's impossible. It's, it, you have to go back to the um, minutes from, and, and if you don't remember that the minutes were March or maybe they were February or maybe they were November, was it 2019, was it 2018? It's really hard to find stuff. So, um, and Colleen actually knows the year and the date. So it's been a pleasure working with her. Um, and, and that's very important because we, we need to track it. I, I just wanted to mention from the budget and strategy committee a, a lot of this stuff is very important to us. And I, I spoke with Howard, or, uh, Howard and I emailed earlier in the week and Andrew and I spoke today. We're trying to track our budget and, and requests from capital and, and um, expense. And we need to keep going, this going forward. So this is very, tonight's meeting is very important even though it's a small agenda because we need to start thinking what we want to do for the 2024 budget. And um, greatly appreciate all that you're doing. And, and, and if I can just say, I mean, sometimes I find, you know, the process can be a lengthy one. Just for example, we, I've been working with the community board for a mid signal on, if you recall, Andrew and Howard on West 106th Street. We've been going back and forth about this for maybe three years. And finally, it's been approved. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, yeah, and that that signal is going to be installed at the end of March, right? So, and what, what, great news. Shelly. And what yeah, am I? Delhi will be thrilled. 
yeah. has been 66th Street between um, Amsterdam and, and West End where we need to narrow the street and it just needs to be paint. But, yep. you know, because it's fallen between the cracks, we're not able to say, hey, wait, this is an easy fix. So I think once we get this up on a, on a, on into a, a um, database or, or or some kind of system, we can then say to Colleen, hey, what's happening with West Sister Street with, with the, the paint to narrow the street down? Or what's happening with, you know, 110th Street? What's happening? We'll, we'll have a better vision of what's going on. Great. Uh, who is next? Uh, Rich? Rich is next. Elizabeth. Yeah. I'm sorry. Elizabeth is... No, I'm, I'm not next. Okay. Rich, then Doug, and then uh, we'll move on. Rich. Yeah, I, I want to echo the uh, compliments to Colleen. And I think it could really benefit the committee to hear from Colleen. I felt since I've been on the board that the board is working too much in isolation. And we've said many times, you know, no one on the board has any background in transportation planning, you know, with the potential exception of Andrew with public transit. And I feel like the committee comes together and comes up with all these different ideas. And some are really good because we have a really good sense of the community. And some of them were overreaching because you know, we're not transportation experts. And I feel like you know, DOT has any number of experts who are doing their thing and working to make the city safer. And I feel like when we're just throwing things at DOT, you know, sometimes they align with DOT priorities. Sometimes they might raise issues that need to be raised because we have our local expertise. And sometimes they're just distractions. And I'd love to hear from Colleen how could the board be better at working with DOT to elevate priorities that DOT has recognized and just get community support for those priorities and make the board more aligned with DOT instead of working in two separate vacuums, throwing stuff at you and you know, potentially having those things be distractions instead of helpful. That, that's an excellent point you raise. And I think in, in moving forward, when you craft your resolutions, or when you have a discussions, I think it would be great to say, um, Colleen, what do you think? Do you think this is feasible? Is this something that DOT can do? Realis realistically speaking, um, what's the process that's involved? I think information sharing is, is important because it'll align more with what you're asking us to do and realistically, if we can get this done. And I think to follow up on that, the more insight you can give us into what DOT was doing, we will get more of an education and learn better what we should be doing. So does, it's a dialogue. Does DOT have priorities for our district? Like, like are there separate priorities and separate analyses of things that should be done in the district? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I mean, we do go to budget consultations um, and uh, I think Roberta is very, well informed of that, and as well as Mark Diller, because Mark has been, you know, he he's been at those meetings um, that I've been there, and we work with the community on the priority, um, you know, list that they give us or priority projects that they would like us to, to do. Um, so that that's a form of engagement that you know we take away from you know budget consultations to see what what can be done um, in terms of safety improvements within the district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doug, you have another comment? Yeah, uh, we're not at new business yet, correct? Um, I'm ready to move to new business. Okay, well, well I just wanted, first, I just want to add to the cacophony of gratitude to Colleen for being here and, uh, you know, it, much appreciated. And, um, and I also wanted to remind people that not only is she at these meetings, she's also at the district cabinet meeting. So she, and speaking of the district cabinet meeting and her involvement in other uh, municipalities, you know, we can perhaps add to the bilateral flow of information. Um, if Colleen wishes to share anything at the district cabinet meetings with Max, um, then we can bring that back to the committee too. So it can be a two-way flow. Um, so I just wanted to say that, and then I have new business link. Thank you. Okay, we are ready to move on to new business. Um, I guess I exhausted old business. Actually, um, did we wanna look at the comments in the chat? Uh, not to beat it okay, down. Okay, the, the first three, the, the third- Have um, been addressed. Away, right, right. And then uh, we have Ann Gruber who talks about 
uh, streets, pedestrian safety. The, again, every, every meeting I say the perfect should not be the enemy of the good. Every meeting I say we need better enforcement. Um, unfortunately, the community board doesn't control that. Um, we have sp we requested specific changes to the streetscape to, um, that are self-enforcing, um, and we've been discussing them for the last 45 minutes. But I think we all agree that there's a, a need for smarter and better enforcement of the uh, most reckless activities that occur in our streets. So that's that's the response. Can, to we, that. Uh, can we let Elizabeth speak? Because um, Colleen might be leaving, and it, what she has to say affects Colleen. So okay, no, no, I'm here. Um, I'm here throughout the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let, let's move on. Uh, anyway, uh, Elizabeth, first first uh, on new business. Yeah, just on new business. I just want to acknowledge to everyone uh, today is um, International Women's Day, uh, and I want to acknowledge that our past two DOT commissioners. Uh, have been women. It just froze. Jeanette Sadek. Oh, I thought it was just me. And then Polly Trottenberg. They have done a met working with us. I also want to acknowledge, and I hope my internet connection is not frozen tonight. I've had some difficulties. Maybe but you can also, turn off your video, Elizabeth. Sometimes oh, maybe that I helps. do that. Maybe that's what I should do. Maybe that will help. Um, so I hope everyone heard me, but I just want to acknowledge over the course of my time on the community board, we've been really um, of benefit of having transportation, um, DOT chairs and DOT commissioners within the city who have been women. Um, it's been Jeanette Sadat Khan, it's been Holly Trottenberg, who is now the Deputy Secretary of Transportation in the federal government. Um, and we had Margaret Forgione, who came to probably every single one of our meetings uh, when I was working on, and, and many of us uh, um, on the board were working over the years. Elizabeth, your internet and she's is... now the first, take a moment to acknowledge yeah. their service. Yes, yes, and that's it. So without, I don't, I don't know if my connection is being interrupt, interrupted, but just thinking that that's a really important thing tonight to acknowledge them and their efforts. And uh, you know, again, I think there are a lot of important issues they've gotten things done, and I just want to mention that tonight. So thank, you. thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so um, much. Anyone else with new matters? Ken has his hand raised, so why don't you go ahead, Ken, and we'll look for other people. Okay. Um, this is sort of old new business, but the uh, we had an issue uh, last summer with the 20th precinct parking in the turn lane on Columbus Avenue, just north of 81st Street. Um, that seems to have resurfaced. Um, and also they are, uh, cars are now are also parking in the mixing zone, which is a turn lane, uh, also on Columbus, uh, just north of 82nd. Um, there are several, uh, a number of cars there that have NYPD uh, placards on the uh, dashboards. Um, so uh, how do we want to deal with this? Stephen, could we have the community board send a letter? Yeah, I noticed this myself when I was up there. I, um, I defer to Stephen on this. We certainly could send a communication. I don't recall what we did last year. I know we reached yeah. out. It seemed like we should find out. I also know we have the public safety committee, and you know, maybe I know that they are starting a conversation. So I'd be happy to follow up with Howard and Andrew and just sort of figure something out. Um, so I if I can. On that. If I can interject, um, there is the transportation chief Royston that you can send this to at One Police Plaza. Um, I attend traffic stat every month, and this is something that she um, really is against of you know any um, NYPD vehicle parking in the bike lane or obstructing the bike lane. Um, I'll be more than happy, Stephen, to get you that address tomorrow and send it to you, um, and you, the board can send a letter to her. Yeah, well, that's I, great. Could I suggest something oh, that's a little less formal? Is that now that we have a functioning district service cabinet, wouldn't this be the first? You know, start start small. You can always expedite. Uh, uh, you know, um, 
increase the, the volume if you need to, but maybe that's the way to do that. Just a thought. Max, is, there that a, is that a place that you feel that you can elevate this? Yeah, I certainly think so. There's, there's time. We've been running them with a little time to spare, so I believe so. All right, well, why don't, you know, we can still follow up, and thank you, Colleen. We'll still take that name, but, but I'll confirm with Max that maybe the first step is the, is the you know, I'd rather approach them directly, and if they didn't respond, then go over their head. I think that would be the right thing to do, and, and I'll work with Max to come up with a game plan to do so. And I'll, and I'll let the chairs know about it, and if anybody asks, they can update them. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, Doug and then Rich. Thanks. Um, I know that we've discussed this before as a committee. I'm not sure if we've ever passed any resolutions, but um, perhaps some of you have read the news that the Department of Finance is reducing some fines for delivery companies. They're increasing some, but have been reducing uh, others. And uh, if the report is correct in 2020, uh, or was it 2018? There was, no, I think it's, two, sorry, 2018, those um, companies were given $20 million in discounts, 20 million. And the, um, the, the, the merits of this, uh, I, I understand, is that it speeds up the courtroom and it, uh, it saves a lot of time. It's, there's some benefit. I don't know if it's $20 million worth of benefit, but I see that, um, some of those fines are not going to be reduced for, for example, this trucks parking and bike lanes fine, but they are reduced significantly uh, for double parking. Um, and, you know, I think it's worthy of a discussion. I don't know if we've ever passed a resolution, but I just find it to be disturbing because um, essentially what we're doing is we're saying, you know, you can pay to play here and it's kind of encouraging illegal, um, it may be illegal is strong, but, you know, encouraging, yeah, I guess it's, it's illegal. illegal. Part. It is illegal, Technically right? illegal. Oh, so, you're absolutely right. But, and now in all, so I, I mean, I can argue both sides of this, that, you know, this is obviously played into needing more loading zones and, um, but it's really, um, when, when we're strapped uh, for a budget in the city to basically just, you know, any individual or small company that, parks their car and has a ticket, does, has the ability to, to go to court and fight it, but uh, to have just a wholesale discount like that, um, I, just find it, I just find it very upsetting. I don't Especially, know- Especially, Doug, when we're trying to speed up bus travel, and this is an impediment to that. That's right. Yeah, how's this for a quick resolution? We'll put it on our um, agenda for next month and discuss this. I have a sense that this is something the committee would like to adopt a resolution on. Uh, there was that big article uh, recently how the city is reducing the fines for these obstructions and they're reducing them even more uh, uh, to a greater extent for larger companies, which seems counterintuitive in any event. Yeah, it was in the news today, it, Howard. It, there was, was a, press, right, the a press conference. Yes, yeah. yeah. uh, we definitely will have it on our agenda for next uh, month when we, can, when we can act on it. Yeah, double parking has actually been decreased, 43% discount for a big company for a double park, 43%. That was just the cost of doing business now. Thanks. Which will be on our next well. agenda. Um, Ken, is it yeah, this is up? Yeah, the, it's up again. This is related. Um, I just read that uh, the uh, city is considering giving Spectrum a variance for uh, uh, violating the uh, anti-idling laws. In other words, I, they would be able to idle with impunity, I believe. Um, so this may be more for the Parks and Environment Committee, but I thought I'd mention it in case we want to talk about I it. I think that's a joint issue, but that, thank you. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it hasn't happened yet, but that's, you know, I've, I've, I've been seeing a lot of shocking news in the last couple of weeks. So at this point, I'm ready to believe anything, but um, yeah. if it's true, we need to get it on our agenda. I'll look into it a little more. Okay. Anything else? Um, anyone in the community? No. Is that it? Um, well, 15 minutes overtime. Barbara, I don't know if you're still with us. Not so bad. Um, great. Not too bad. Not too bad. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the rest of their week. Um, I'll see most of you at the uh, steering committee. Have a good night. <laughs>